Welcome to the complete guide on leucovorin and autism, what parents and providers need to know. Everything just changed for autism families. In an unprecedented announcement from the White House, President Trump revealed that the FDA will approve leucovorin as the first treatment specifically for autism symptoms linked to cerebral folate deficiency. If you're a parent who just heard this news and you're wondering what exactly is leucovorin or could this help my child, this is exactly who I made this video for. I'm Olga Afichuk and I spend my days bridging the gap between cutting edge pharmaceutical science and real families who need answers. As a pharmacy liaison at Harbor Health and Apothecary, my naturopathic training from Bastyr University and experience, I'm able to translate complex compounding concepts into practical information that parents and healthcare providers can actually use. And right now, you need to know the truth about leucovorin. Not the political spin, not the oversimplified headlines, but the actual pharmaceutical science explained in a way that makes sense. Because this announcement isn't just news, it could be a game changer for thousands of families. Here's what we're dealing with. In 2014, one in 31 children born would have an autism diagnosis, which was up from just one in 36 two years prior, and nearly five times higher than when the CDC began tracking in 2000. Boys are also just hit hardest, one in 20. In some areas like California, prevalence rates are even higher. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly what leucovorin is, how it works in the brain, what the research shows, and most importantly, whether this could be relevant for your family or patients. Let's dive into the science. So what exactly happened at the White House? President Trump, alongside Secretary RFK Jr., made three major announcements that sent shockwaves through both the autism and medical communities. First, the FDA announced that they were working with GSK to relabel leucovorin for treating cerebral folate deficiency, a condition that can cause autism-like symptoms. This is huge because it's the first time that the FDA has specifically approved any medication for autism symptoms. Second, they issued a warning about acetaminophen use during pregnancy, citing studies suggesting a link to autism risk. And third, they announced over $50 million in new NIH research funding for autism studies. This isn't the FDA just randomly deciding to try a cancer drug for autism. The FDA conducted a systematic analysis of literature published between 2009 and 2024, including patient-level data from case reports and mechanistic studies. They determined that the evidence supports leucovorin's effectiveness for cerebral folate deficiency. But here's what's driving the controversy. We're not talking about all autism here. We're talking about a specific subset of children whose autism symptoms may actually be caused by a treatable vitamin deficiency in the brain. And that distinction, my friends, is everything. The medical community is split. Some experts are calling this premature, saying we need larger randomized trials, while others are saying we can't wait for perfect studies when children are suffering from a potentially treatable condition. From my perspective, working with compounding pharmacies, I've seen how off-label use has increased significantly, including for leucovorin, in the past few years as awareness grew in the autism community. All right, now let me translate the pharmaceutical complexity into practical information that you could actually use. Leucovorin, also called folinic acid, is the bioactive form of folate, that's vitamin B9. Now, this is not the folic acid that you buy at the store. This is pharmaceutical grade pre-activated folate that your body can use immediately. And here's why that matters. Regular folic acid has to go through multiple conversion steps in your body before it becomes usable. It's like giving someone a car that they still have to assemble. Leucovorin, however, is like handing them keys to a car that's already running. 
For over 40 years, leucovorin has been used in cancer treatment for what we call rescue therapy. When cancer patients get high-dose methotrexate, which blocks folate metabolism, leucovorin comes in to save healthy cells by bypassing that whole blockade. It's been safely used in thousands of patients, including children. But here's the brilliant connection that researchers discovered. Some children with autism have a similar blockade, preventing folate from reaching their brains. Their bodies might have normal folate levels everywhere else, but their brains are starving for this essential vitamin. The mechanism is fascinating from a pharmacy perspective. Normally, folate gets into the brain through specific transport proteins called folate receptors alpha, but in cerebral folate deficiency, either these receptors don't work properly due to genetic mutations or they're blocked by autoantibodies essentially. The immune system mistakenly attacks the body's own folate transport system. Leucovorin is smart enough to bypass that whole mess. It can use alternative pathways to get into the brain, like the reduced folate carrier system. It's pharmaceutical problem solving at its finest. And here's the critical safety point that I need to emphasize. You cannot just take more folic acid instead. Higher doses of regular folic acid can actually be harmful and may worsen some conditions. This is exactly why personalized medicine and expertise matters. It's not just about the vitamin. It's about the right form, the right dose, and the right delivery system, especially for the right patient. Now, let's talk about cerebral folate deficiency and why this condition has autism researchers so excited. CFD comes in two main forms, and understanding the difference is crucial for parents. The first form is genetic. These are rare mutations in the FOLR1 gene that affect maybe 1 million children worldwide. These kids typically show severe symptoms starting around age 2, like developmental regression, seizures, movement problems, and yes, autistic features. The good news, though, is that when treated with leucovorin, many of these children show remarkable improvement. And here's where things get really interesting from a population health perspective. The second form is autoimmune cerebral folate deficiency. This is where the child's immune system produces antibodies that block folate receptors in the brain. This form appears to be much more common than the genetic type, and symptoms can be more varied, including significant autism-like features. Leading researchers in this field, including Dr. Richard Fry, who has conducted extensive work on folate receptor autoantibodies in autism, have found that children with autism are significantly more likely to have these folate receptor antibodies compared to typically developing children. We're talking about a potential mechanism that could explain autism symptoms on a much larger population. Here's what the research timeline actually looks like. A comprehensive 2021 review and meta-analysis examined 21 studies using leucovorin for autism and cerebral folate deficiency. The results showed that 67% of children with autism and cerebral folate deficiency experienced improvement in overall autism symptoms, with improvements in communication being the most commonly reported benefit. The research also shows that 85% of cerebral folate deficiency cases in autism were attributed to folate receptor autoantibodies, providing crucial insight into the underlying mechanism. More recent studies in 2024 and 2025 have shown similar promising results. A May 2025 study published just months ago found that high-dose folinic acid was well-tolerated and showed benefits for verbal communication in children with autism. But let's be clear about what we're seeing. This isn't a cure for autism spectrum disorder. What we're potentially looking at is identifying a subset of children whose autism symptoms might actually be caused by a treatable brain vitamin deficiency. For these specific children, addressing the underlying folate deficiency could lead to significant improvements in communication, behavior, and overall development.
Now, let me give you the transparent evidence-based reality check that you deserve, because while I'm genuinely excited about this development, we need to maintain scientific integrity. The current evidence base is promising, but limited. Most of the data comes from small case reports and small case series, not large randomized controlled trials. The FDA's systematic analysis looked at 23 publications from 2009 to 2024, but we're still talking about relatively small number of patients. The strongest evidence is for rare genetic forms of cerebral folate deficiency, where the response to leucovorin can be dramatic. For the autoimmune forms, which could potentially affect many more children, the data is more limited and we need larger studies to confirm efficacy. Here's what off-label use has increased significantly really means in practical terms. Physicians have been prescribing leucovorin for autism based on the existing research, even without official FDA approval, for this indication. This isn't unusual in medicine. It's called off-label prescribing, and it's completely legal and often medically appropriate. What this announcement does is formalize this practice and ensure that prescribing information includes proper guidance for safety and efficacy. It also means that insurance coverage may improve, making this treatment more accessible to families. But let's address the elephant in the room. We need larger, longer-term studies. The NIH's new $50 million research initiative should definitely help fill those gaps. We need to understand which children are most likely to respond, what the optimal dosing strategies are, and what the long-term outcomes look like. From my perspective working with healthcare providers, what I'm seeing is cautious optimism. The providers who understand folate metabolism are excited about having a new tool being appropriately careful about patient selection and monitoring. Let's talk safety because this is where training really matters. Leucovorin has over 40 years of safety data from its use in cancer treatment, and that track record is reassuring. The most common side effects reported in autism studies are generally mild. Some children experience increases in hyperactivity or agitation, about 12% in the studies. Aggression occurs in about 10% of children, headaches in about 5%, insomnia in about 8%, and some kids may have temporary increases in tantrum, about 6%. The keyword here is temporary. Most of these effects tend to resolve as children adjust to the treatment. More serious side effects are rare but possible. Nausea, vomiting, and in very rare cases, seizures or allergic reactions. This is exactly why proper medical supervision is absolutely essential. Here's what realistic expectations look like. If your child has cerebral folate deficiency, you might see improvements in verbal communication and social interaction, often within the first few months of treatment. But this isn't going to transform every aspect of autism overnight. The children who respond best tend to be those with documented folate receptor antibodies or genetic confirmations of cerebral folate deficiency. For children without these markers, the likelihood of benefit is much less clear. And here's a crucial point for parents. Comprehensive autism support remains essential regardless of leucovorin treatment. We're talking about adding a tool to the toolkit, not replacing evidence-based behavioral interventions, speech therapy, occupational therapy, and educational support. What do you actually do with this information? Let me give you the practical guidance that parents and providers are asking for right now. If you're a parent wondering whether this could help your child, here are key considerations to understand. First, does your child show signs that might suggest cerebral folate deficiency? These include regression in language or social skills, seizures, movement problems, or autism symptoms that seem to worsen or appear after an illness or immune system challenge. Second, Testing options exist, but aren't widely available yet. Some providers can test for folate receptor antibodies, though testing is still specialized. 
Spinal fluid folate testing exists, but requires a lumbar puncture, which most families understandably want to avoid. Third, leucovorin requires medical supervision and proper dosing based on individual factors like weight and response. Standard tablet strengths do exist, but children often need customized dosing, which is where compounding pharmacies may become valuable for creating liquid formulations or appropriate concentrations. Insurance considerations are also evolving rapidly. With the new FDA labeling, coverage should improve, but there may still be prior authorization requirements or specific diagnostic criteria that insurance companies require. Important limitations to understand is that this treatment isn't appropriate if your child has a known sensitivity to folate compounds, if they're on medications that interact with folate metabolism, or if you're hoping that this would be a complete autism cure. This is a targeted treatment for a specific subset of children with autism symptoms. What this announcement really represents is a fundamental shift towards personalized medicine in autism care. Instead of treating autism like one monolithic condition, we're starting to identify specific biological subtypes that might respond to targeted interventions. The NIH's $50 million research initiative is focusing on what they call exposomics, understanding how environmental, medical, and lifestyle factors interact with genetics to influence autism, risk, and outcomes. This includes studying nutrition factors like folate intake, medical influences, including medications during pregnancy, and immune system responses. This is exactly the kind of approach that aligns with the expertise that compounding pharmacies bring to healthcare. We understand that one-size-fits-all doesn't work for complex conditions. We're trained to think about the individual patient factors, customize treatments, and work closely with providers to optimize outcomes. For the broader autism community, this development brings both hope and important cautions. Hope because it demonstrates that some autism symptoms may indeed be treatable when we identify the right underlying mechanisms. Cautions, though, because we can't let excitement outpace evidence. We need to maintain focus on comprehensive, individualized care. The future that I see is where we have better biomarkers to identify which children might benefit from folate-based treatments and where we have larger studies to guide optimal treatment protocols, and where families have access to personalized medicine approaches that address their child's specific needs. Here's what I want you to remember from this deep dive. Leucovorin represents genuine scientific progress, but it is not a magic bullet for autism. It's a targeted treatment with a specific, potentially treatable condition called cerebral folate deficiency. If this information resonates with your family situation, use it as a foundation for informed conversations with your healthcare providers. Come prepared with questions, understand the current evidence at limitations, and maintain realistic expectations. For my fellow healthcare providers watching this, I encourage you to familiarize yourself with cerebral folate deficiency and consider whether leucovorin might be appropriate for your specific patients in your practice. This is exactly why I do this work, translating pharmaceutical complexity into actionable information that families can use to make informed decisions about their children's health. Drop your questions in the comments below. I read every single one and your questions often become topics for future videos. Subscribe if you want more deep dives into the pharmaceutical developments that can help and affect families. And hit that notification bell so you don't miss any updates as this story continues to evolve. Remember, you're not alone in this journey and every step towards better understanding brings us closer to better outcomes for us and our children.